Hey guys, welcome back to Fab Rugby and today is a very special episode. I am so buzzing about today because we are comparing Rugby 20 with Rugby 2008. Now, Rugby 2008 is a game that was the, la was the very last game we had from EA and it's widely regarded as the best rugby game that we've ever had. Rugby 20 obviously being the latest game that we've had. I wanted to check today whether Rugby 2008 is actually a good game or it's just it, whether it's just me living in a fancy land by thinking it's so good. So we're going to do a direct comparison with Rugby 20. We're going to be looking at everything from the graphics, the menus, the general gameplay, so whether that's rucks, lineouts, scrums, kicking a goal. We'll do, directly compare the two and see whether there's been an improvement in rugby video games or actually <coughs> been a slide and it's got a lot worse in the 12 years since we had Rugby 2008. Let's get into it then, guys. Let's get really deep into it. We'll start from the menus. We'll have a look through the games. We'll finish up with a conclusion whether rugby games have got better or worse <coughs> in the last 12 years. Let's go. So let's have a look into the menus. And on the home page of the Rugby 08, you've got Rugby World Cup, you've got Challenge Mode, Game Mode, My Rugby, and EA Sports Extras. Rugby 20 is bright and colourful and laid out. It's got training, which Rugby 08 gets you to do straight away. They both have a create mode. Now it's slightly different between the both of them. In Rugby 08, you create a player. And you can change them to make them look like you and then you add them to a roster whereas in rugby 20 you're creating a squad it's a bit like fifa in the way that they've got cards and you can build up your squad and you can buy players etc etc the one good thing about rugby 08 is that you can customize a player have him as your name and you can add rugby gloves oh yes you can add rugby gloves scrum caps tape the lot personally i don't think there's a big clear winner on this one um it's whatever takes your fancy Okay, moving on to the player management now. So the big difference between the two is that Rugby 08 has a lot more licenses. They have England, New Zealand, South Africa. We'll get onto that more in a second. But not having licenses mean the squads is just a load of random names in the England team. The squads they have got, they've got the correct squads, but they are missing a lot of key players in Rugby 20. When you move into teams like Northampton in the Premiership, they've not got players like George Furbank, Fraser Dingwell, and lots of others. So moving on to kits then. Now, the kits in Rugby 20 are either incredible or terrible. If they're a licensed team, they're incredible, as you can see with the Japanese one, but the other teams like New Zealand, England, South Africa are woeful. They are so bad. Whereas Rugby oh, it has lots and teams. It has Super Rugby, it has it has one special thing that I really like, which is they have uh, the Barbarians with Australia A. They have Pacific Isles, uh, Junior All Blacks, and then the final big plus that I think for Rugby 08. So so far, I think Rugby 08 is winning with content, but the stadiums. They have so many more stadiums than Rugby 20. They have official grounds and they have Twickenham. So let's get into the game then. So right away we get to see the stadiums: Twickenham on the left and an unnamed stadium on the right. So the big difference now you'll see, obviously this is a PlayStation 4 versus a PlayStation 2, so the graphics, there should be 12 years worth of graphic difference. Now the players I think look more, you can identify them more on the left even with players that are licensed. Obviously you're looking at England versus South Africa on both teams but Rugby 20 doesn't have the license, Rugby 08 does. Rugby 08 has a nice touch with having a national anthem but I think if you were to look at the players from the licensed teams as well you can still identify them better on 08 than you can on Rugby 20. Commentators in Rugby 08 was Grant Fox and Ian Robertson and then in Rugby 20 it's Nick Mullins and Ben Kay. So if we just take the intro then I think in Rugby 08 the players are more identifiable. I think when you see the licensed players I think they're more identifiable than Rugby 20. But if we're looking at the stadium, the general movement of the fans, Rugby 20 wins as it should do being a PlayStation 4 game. So let's get into the game then. So you can see the lineouts, they're a little bit glitchier on Rugby 08. Rugby 20, you're competing for the ball. Moving into the back line, the passing is very slick. You can offload in both, you just need to press X on Rugby 08. Whereas Rugby 20, you can still pass while you're in the tackle, which is a nice touch. When kicking at goal, it's kind of a bit more easier, I would say, on Rugby 08. You've got control with an arrow, whereas Rugby 20 is a bit of luck of the draw where you strike the joystick. There is wind factors in both, but I think Rugby 08 shades it for kicking at goal. And you get to play as Andy Goody in Rugby 08. 
Okay, so moving on to scrums now, it's a little bit easier in Rugby 08. In Rugby 20, as you'll know from my online games, it's quite hard to actually win a scrum, especially in an online game. It's quite, quite complicated, you have to do multiple different things, whereas Rugby 08, you put the ball in and it's out. Looking at the players now, you can see Jason Robertson on the left and Dan Bigger on the right. The detail is obviously better in Rugby 20, and there's, but there's a lot more actual graphic content during the games in Rugby 08. There's fights, there's off the ball stuff, it's a lot more interesting. So then guys, it's time for the conclusion. What did I think of Rugby 2008? I haven't played it in years, so it was great to revisit it. And I have to admit, it lived up to everything I remember it being. It was as good as that. It was slick, the, the passing was great, the offloading was good, the players were lightning fast. Rugby 20 isn't as bad when I compared it like for like without online mode, okay? That's the big difference. Rugby 20 has an online mode, Rugby 08 doesn't. But as we know from the glitches and the problems we've had, it doesn't work particularly well. So yeah, we've known about the Rugby 20 issues, the ratings, the glitches, etc., etc. But I don't think it was done out completely today. I think there was signs that it's not as bad as maybe we thought offline mode i do think potentially they could keep working at it but for the love of god ea please get back in the game with us please bring us a rugby game that us rugby fans want we want it to be fun fast and just updated with online modes that work it would be so good as a rugby fan to have that and i feel like if we're trying to connect with young fans we're trying to connect with a new generation of fans rugby needs to do more and this is one route it definitely needs to take to move forward there we go then guys that's all in today's video what did you think of it and which game did you prefer was it rugby 20 or rugby 08 let me know in the comments below which game you would prefer to play and i'll see you guys soon for the next video whenever that'll be see you guys bye